for um, welcoming Accenture today to talk about their Skills to Succeed Academy. And it's a great online platform for job seekers. Um, and as we go through the demo today, you'll see um, how interactive it is and the things that they've thought about in terms of putting it together for the job seeker and also how beneficial it could be potentially for your organization. Um, and then at the end, he'll, he'll talk about how you can get plugged in or connected if you want more information. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Thomas uh, and you can take it from there. Hi everyone, thanks so much for taking time out of your your Friday Eve afternoon to, to join us today. Um, I, uh, I first, before I get started, want to introduce Linda Quinones Lopez. Sorry if I mispronounced that, I tried, but uh, she's with Perscolas and she is one of our current uh, community partners who uses the Academy. And I invited her to join real quick at the beginning. I know she's probably pretty busy, but I uh, wanted her to, to give, us, give us an overview of their organization and how it was implemented. So that way, as I give my presentation today, you can kind of tie back into to what they've done and, and just hear a good testimonial here. So Linda, I'll let you, let you take the floor. Great. Um, you did a great job in pronouncing my name. Thank you very much. And, and uh, hello to everyone. I am um, pleased to be with you today. I want to tell you a little bit about who we are and how we are using the platform. Prescolis is a national nonprofit technology training workforce organization with a mission to open doors to uh, technology careers for individuals from often overlooked communities. And so we are in communities where there's a demand for IT workers. There are not training programs that, that are so similar to ours that it wouldn't make sense to be there. And where there are funders to support the work that we do. None of our students pay for any of the services that we provide. Um, I am part of the national team, and I've been point on implementing the Accenture uh, Skills to Succeed Academy from the beginning. We've been working with Accenture now for about a year and a half, um, and we've implemented the platform across all of our sites. We are in 10 cities, and we have, I'm sorry, we're in 10 states, and we have 13 sites throughout those states, um, from New York to Dallas, Texas, and a bunch of places in between. If you're interested in learning more about us, you can visit our website. And, um, and if you happen to be serving folks in any of our communities, feel free to uh, refer folks to us. I'm not gonna spend uh, much more time talking about that because I wanna focus on the project, the Accenture project. We started, um, as I mentioned, about a year and a half ago. Uh, to date, we've had 1,900 individuals use the platform. Uh, the students who have used the platform have indicated that they feel more confident about their preparedness to go to work. And, um, and, and, in, and in overall, our, about um, two modules are completed by every student. So we began implementation because we have a core group of staffers who provide professional development, what we call career development. Um, when we began discussing the possibility of using the platform with Accenture, it came at a really great time because it was, a, it was during a time where we were looking to diversify our career, career development training. And so Prescolis offers both tech training and we spend about one day a week, over 12 weeks, preparing individuals to go out there and get a job. Because as you all know, it's not enough to have a skill. You have to be able to sell yourself to an employer to be able to gain that, that uh, job and get that job offer. And so I, you know, I was really interested in the platform because I felt like it provided us a way to diversify the student's experience. Students are in the class six hours a day. And our, our strategy is to um, lecture. We do lots of role playing. We focus on a number of strategies, but the platform offered an opportunity where students could do some computer-based learning, which is not something that we previously did for our career development or as part of our career development. Um, I think one thing that we found by way of feedback from students, and so you, if you've read anything on the platform, you know that it was originally developed for individuals who are within the age range of 18 to 24. Our population is an adult population. 
are, we serve folks 18 to 55 years of age who are interested in entering or launching an IT career. And the characters in the platform seem, appear to be a little young, but the content is really fantastic. And, and so what we've done in implementing the program, I brought all of the career developers who would use the platform with students together to walk them through the curriculum. Accenture does an amazing job in preparing uh, you, uh, the instructors to use a platform, but we've had to have constant and ongoing check-ins with the team members to make sure that they understand how to use it, that they're not running into any challenges, and that they see the value in it. And I think overall, our instructors do see the value in, the, in, in using the platform because they're using it pretty regularly. Every cohort that comes through for SCOLIS, um, and we will train about 500 folks a year, will use at least one module of the curriculum, but on average, as I mentioned, two modules are being used. Um, and in some cases, some instructors are having students use many, many more modules. Um, so they're using it frequently. Our approach was to make sure that our team members understand, see the value, understand the value. Our instructors had to sit and go through some key modules so that they can be able to focus on delivering um, the use of the module and understanding what the module contains so that if students had any issues, they could address those. Um, so what have been some of the benefits for our team members? I mean, the content is really great. And so, um, and I'll talk specifically about some modules that I would suggest that you consider if you are working with a population of folks that are 18 and older, as we are. Um, if you're working with a population that's younger, I think the, the, the entire um, platform is gonna be fantastic. We focused on two curriculums primarily the um, Seeking a Job, uh, Success in the Job uh, curriculum, which is really more appropriate for folks who graduated our program, but the Getting a Job curriculum, we use quite often, and we're using six or seven of the modules in that curriculum very regularly. Um, I wanna just uh, give you a couple of modules that really have been fantastic for us. Um, and I, I've gone, when we started this process and when we began this relationship, I took the time to review all of, uh, many modules, not all of them obviously, but many modules, because I needed to be convinced myself that this content was um, going to be impactful for an older population. And, and I found that it really does an, a, a great job of replacing some of the content that focused on similar topics that we had in our curriculum, we were able to just replace those, those, that content with some of the platform modules. And what that meant for our team members, the folks delivering the training, is that they can now focus on reviewing resumes, um, checking assignments, you know, they, they can use that hour or so to focus on other things to help them move um, this progress of our students forward. There are six curricula, there are six modules that I really love. Um, my favorite, my all time favorite is the online presence module, which you'll, when you go through the uh, presentation with Thomas, you will see it's, um, it focuses on helping someone develop their LinkedIn profile. It is just perfect. And I think every student going through the job search process should, should really look at that. Um, Grizzly Hotels, creating your resumes, test driving the car, the selection process and panel and the panel interview module are all fantastic modules because it really does help a job seeker understand what the mm -hmm. landscape um, in, in the uh, job search process really looks like, what they should anticipate, and it really helps prepare them for that job search process. I'm gonna stop and ask if anyone has any questions. I feel like I might've taken too much time, um, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to respond to them. Thanks so much, Linda, that was great. You're welcome. Anybody have any questions for, for Linda with Priscilla's before they hop off, before she hops off? 
I don't have any questions, but thank you, Linda, for, for joining us today and giving your, um, your testimonial. We appreciate that. You're very welcome. Take care. Good luck, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, again, for being here. So um, I'm going to dive right in. Um, if you don't know much about Accenture, uh, just a brief overview of who we are. We have over a half million employees in 200 cities across the world in 55 countries. Um, and we're a professional services company in various industries, and technology is really at the heart of what we do. Um, so we have, with that many employees, we have quite a bit of experience reviewing resumes, interviewing candidates, and and onboarding our new employees. And through that onboarding process, we, we took the point of view as an employer, as well as our technology know-how, and used that to create the Skills to Succeed Academy. Um, as part of our corporate citizenship program, which is the team that I am aligned to, uh, we had a goal by the end of 2020 to help 3 million people fill the skills that are needed to get a job or start a business. And as you can see, we've exceeded that goal and hit 3.6 million now. And I believe there's a new goal that I need to get updated in this deck of 5 or 6 million by, I think, 2023. So of that 3.6 million, though, over 200,000 people have been skilled globally through the Skills to Succeed Academy, this platform, that, this learning management system that I'm getting ready to show you. And 80% of those 200,000 indicate that their employability skills have improved through the academy itself. Um, through our research and development of the academy, though, we found that employers are not only expecting candidates to have technical skills, but those employability skills. And organizations are being asked to fill that employability skills gap. We found that learners need skills and confidence to plan their careers, find a job, and what to do in those first few days and weeks once they get the job so they can keep it. And digital learning is, is a, a great way of, of uh, improving access to, um, hold on, I tripped right there. <laughs> so we found that um, digital learning allows students to learn anywhere, anytime, and allows the user to go at their own pace. Uh, it can reach more people at a lower cost, and in this instance, it's a free resource. Uh, it can be tailored to each person's unique situation, and I'll show you a free assessment in a moment that will allow for a customized learning plan based on each user's needs. Um, so I'm going to show a quick video that kind of gives a great overview of what the Academy is all about. In Accenture's Skills to Succeed Academy, you'll help them plan their careers, find the right job, and once they have a job, you'll help us keep it. The Skills to Succeed Academy has got highly effective digital training. And it's got unique simulation technology. The Academy is kind of like a flight simulator for the world of work. So you must have some weaknesses. Nobody's perfect. What would you say your weaknesses are? Each step of the way, you'll decide what we should say and do. Sometimes we'll get it right. And sometimes we'll make mistakes, so you don't have to. Well, I'm not too good at getting up in the morning. I'm just not a morning person, which makes me really late for things. I really need to work on that. I've got no get up and go. Sam, are you taking this seriously? Different combinations of choices lead to different outcomes. So there's thousands of ways that things can turn out. What would you say your weaknesses are? One of my biggest weaknesses used to be taking criticism. At school, I used to get really defensive when teachers spoke about my work. Now I know that feedback can be a good thing, so I get less defensive nowadays. Good example. Now, it's just like real life. So I hope that sound came through okay. I know that on Zoom, it's it's hard to share your screen and sound at the same time. So, um, but once you're on the website and the sound actually is really good quality. So, um, but we like to show that because it just gives a great, uh, it gives a great demo of what the, and then sets the stage for the Academy. Um, so let me switch back to my deck here.
So as I mentioned, the Academy is a free uh, online learning program, and it's designed to build those skills and confidence that are needed by those job seekers today. Um, it was originally designed for a younger audience um, of 16 to 24 years, like Linda was mentioning earlier, but it actually can be used with beneficiaries of all ages. As she mentioned, their, their age range goes up to 55. Um, and we have another organization that uses it as part of a senior citizenship uh, training program. So we started in the UK about five years ago and we worked with subject matter experts and job seekers themselves to understand the barriers and that job seekers face and the mistakes that are made during the employment process. Um, I remember when I was interviewing, you know, I made several mistakes in interviews and learned on, you know, in real time. But this gives a safe place for people to make those mistakes, learn from it, and get real feedback and coaching in real time from uh, a coach that's built into the, uh, the end of the platform. Um, it has since expanded from the UK into Australia, South Africa, Ireland, the Philippines, Canada, and our US tailored version rolled out uh, just a few years ago. Um, it's a very media rich and, and immersive way to learn by doing. Uh, we worked with a gaming developer to make this experience engaging and fun. Uh, so it, it, is a very it is very flexible on how it can be rolled out and it can be used in distance learning, uh, a self-study format, uh, which is very important for today, especially in our current environment. Um, it can be taught in a classroom. So if you wanted to like, once we do return to classrooms or anything, you could, you could uh, implement it in a classroom format. You can do it with an advisor or any combination of those. Uh, it's super easy to implement since it is a web-based learning platform. So you just log in and start working through your modules. There are actually three categories to the courses um, with a total of 36 modules. And I'm gonna show you more in a moment, but there's in, in that pre-assessment that I mentioned earlier. So those, so the, the benefit, there are many benefits to the academy. There's a benefits to the learners, to the advisors and the faculty and to the organization as a whole. I've mentioned some of the benefits to the learner in that they can learn at their own speed and you know, they, can, they can learn in a safe environment with that feedback and coaching. Um, they can personalize the training topics by using that pre-assessment or you can pick out what modules that you want to uh, have your beneficiaries learn and uh, just give them a subset of the 36 modules because the 36 is a lot. Um, and then it helps them build those soft skills, hard skills and digital literacy skills that are needed in the employment process and getting started at a new job. But for the advisors and the faculty, it frees up time and time for more targeted coaching and advising because you don't have to like work with them on their resume, for example. Uh, this course will help them build their resume and give them a template that they can come out with a real resume. Um, you can then personalize the training to each learner and it'll save time developing content and delivering foundational training. For your organization as a whole, it helps uh, build capacity within your organization and, and just open up that capacity because it's going to free up time for the advisors or your faculty. Um, it's going to provide that employability training at a free cost to your, to your learners, um, which is not something that's easily found, it's something that's free. Um, it'll help complement existing programs that you already have, and it will help you reach new learners, and it'll start a new partnership with Accenture. The three different courses that are categories to the courses I was talking about are listed here. So You and Your Career has six modules. It's where you can explore careers, um, where you can explore careers, consider interests, uh, your skills, motivation and style, and create an actual action plan. Uh, getting a job is the most practi practical and meaningful piece of the academy. There are 20 modules in this course, and you will create and tailor a resume, learn how to make good, a good first impression, prepare for a successful interview, whether that be in person, on the, on the phone, or a panel interview, and you can learn how social media can help or hurt you in your job search. 
And then success in work has 10 modules, which focuses on what you need in those first few days and weeks at your job. Uh, it starts with fundamentals like why it's important to be on time for work and how you can plan out your route the night before. And then it moves to topics of professionalism, teamwork and collaboration, uh, how to handle conflict in the workplace, time management, staying motivated, and just everything you really need to know in the, as you start your new job. Um, so like I said, you can implement any number of these courses into your programming. Even incorporating just one or two modules will give you a benefit. Uh, like we said, it's very modular, so you can easily tailor it to the, to the needs that your organization have. Like I said, the Academy was built by, we partnered with a gaming developer, so it's like a flight simulator and puts the job seeker uh, fully immersed into the world of finding a job and what it's like once they get to the job. Uh, learners meet young adults with real world career challenges and they learn how to navigate those challenges in the safe environment instead of making mistakes in real time. Uh, there's a live coach on the, or there's a coach that's in the platform that, that, uh, that gives them guidance throughout all the modules and offers encouragement uh, as they experience the real, and they, they will experience real, real career counselors, employers, and job seekers who, share, who will share tips for success. We wanted to make it as realistic, relevant, and engaging as possible. We did that by the use of characters from various ge geographies and life experiences who work through challenges with your learner. So, you know, you have Lila who's in high school and trying to start her career. You have Sam, uh, Sam who is uh, trying to get a job in construction and Daniel who got in trouble with the law and is trying to get his life back on track. You have a single mom, you have uh, a veteran, and, um, and so there, there's just all kinds of different life experiences built into their storylines that, that try to make them relevant. And like Linda said, the content is, is really beneficial and how they tie it to these, to these uh, characters. Um, So what makes the, the Academy so engaging is the blended learning format. As you saw in the video, there's online materials. Um, so we have the performance simulations, like what you saw is the example where, uh, where Sam was in that interview and you have all those, like it's a tree format to where you can pick different options of how the conversation will go. And then um, it kind of directs where the where the conversation leads. Um, if you make a mistake, the coach jumps in and, and gives immediate feedback uh, right there uh, in real time. There's also a reference zone, which I'll show you in a little bit, which will give those additional tips. And then the computer-based training, which are um, which is a more interactive learning and way of learning and it has uh, videos, quizzes at the end. It provides feedback surveys and activity packs. Those activity packs are up here. They tie up to the offline materials. So there's real checklists and uh, templates, action plans that they can actually print out and have in their hand to bring the economy to life. And then to really bring it to life, we have those advisor-led activities. So we, we provide like follow-up questions that you can have with your learners to kind of tie the academy and the topics they've discussed into their real life uh, job search. We have some success stories and I will send out this deck to everyone after the call. That way you have the deck and you have my contact information. Um, but you know, we have some we have four different slides of success stories one here on slide 12 and then slides 22 through 24 also are success stories as well um philip here is the one that i'll highlight he was a uh, he he was unemployed and didn't have a lot of work experience and didn't like college but he had a passion and aptitude for it so one of our partners offered a two-week career explore, exploration course where he took some of our modules and he reported back that it helped build his confidence in career and interviewing, in career planning and interviewing, sorry. Uh, he went on to, to earn his server administration fundamental, fundamental certification and CompTIA certification, and he now works in IT tech support and pursuing additional IT certifications. 
So I'll go ahead and do a demo now. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? You can unmute yourself if you do, but uh, feel free to speak up at any point, you know, during the call. If you do have any questions about anything in real time, or we'll have time for questions at the end as well. So the Academy is super easy to navigate to. It's just s2sacademy.org. Um, and you would register here. We would give you a, a code for, um, we would give you a code for your organization to have them logged in or to, to tie them to your organization. I'm sorry, there's some background noise that's distracting me a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and log in here and show you around the, the site. Oh, I don't know why it automatically dove in right here. Hold on, sorry. Trying to just get logged in like normal. All right, here we go. So on the courses tab here, so I'm, I'm logged in as an advisor. You will not see this advisor uh, tab if you're a learner. But over here on the courses tab, this is where I said you could take a pre-assessment and get right down to what your your specific scenario um, is for each learner or maybe for your organization. I'm working with one organization that picked these out so that it would tell them what courses they should provide to their learners. Um, so let's just say that I'm going to in brush up on, I wanna brush up on my interview technique and although this is not realistic right now, I'm going to do a face-to-face -face interview. We're going to show, so we're going to show the recommended courses here. So this is going to pull up uh, seven custom courses for you that's going to get you ready for that interview. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of information about them, show how far you are along in them in case you haven't, um, if, in case you've started some of them or, or you haven't started any or show which ones have completed. So. I'm going to go ahead and do Into the Wild here. This is a, a great performance simulation and give you a little, uh, show you a little bit how that works. Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm going to give you help and feedback. Sam's about to arrive at an interview for a job at Grizzly Hotels in Yellowstone. The job is part of a countrywide program to encourage young people to work in our national parks. A week or so ago, he passed a screening interview over the phone. Yesterday, he participated in a group exercise, and now he's traveled to the hotel where he'll work if he gets the job. The program has paid for his travel. He's been asked to wear high visibility clothing in preparation for a tour of the maintenance departments. You're going to decide what Sam should say and do during his job interview. If you ever get stuck or need some help making a decision, just click the question mark. Click next to continue. Good luck. So, I'm Michael. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming to the group exercise stage yesterday. Did you have a good trip? It's up to you to decide what happens next. Click each option to read it. Click watch to see it. And when you've decided, click choose. Sometimes the text of all the options will be the same. That's when you'll need to watch the body language closely by clicking watch. If you get stuck, click the question mark and click next or close to start. Good luck. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm zoomed out a little bit here. Yeah, I am. I thought that looked a little small, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you each of the options and we'll pick a solution here. Oh, I gotta close this, yeah. Yes, great, thanks. I got to talk with some of the hotel staff who were traveling with us and we saw some buffalo on the way to the park, which was cool. The interviewer yesterday told me to give this to you. Here you go. Hey, I didn't like his body language there. Not sure if that's the right one. Yes. Great, thanks. I got to talk to some of the hotels that were traveling with us, and we saw some buffalo on the way through the park, which was cool. The interviewer yesterday told me to give this to you. Here you go. Let's watch the third one. Yes, great, thanks. I got to talk with some of the hotel staff who were traveling with us, and we saw some buffalo on the way through the park, which was cool. The interviewer yesterday told me to give this to you. Here you go. 
So as you can see, he said the same thing three different ways, and you just got to kind of pay attention to the body language and the um, and the and just like his tone, the way that he is uh, he's portraying himself and and re responding to the questions. So which one do you guys think is the right one? Anybody got any recommendations? I'm thinking it's three. How about three? You want to do three? Three? Yes. Great. Thanks. I got to talk with some of the hotel staff who were traveling with us, and we saw some buffalo on the way through the park, which was cool. The interviewer yesterday told me to give this to you. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Yeah, those bison are amazing, aren't they? You don't want to get on the wrong side of them. All right, so this next one, we'll see how the conversation goes, and we're going to try to pick the wrong one. Yeah, they are fascinating. <laughs> Buffalo and bison, both fascinating. And yeah, you don't want to catch either of them on a bad day. <clears throat> so about this job, bison, I didn't see any bison. You aren't listening. Yeah, that might be the wrong one. <laughs> bison? I don't think I've ever seen one of those. I saw a buffalo. Do they look alike? Well, it's a little different because you're not sure like how the conversation should go. I think the right one might be the first one, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the wrong one just to be safe. Or not to be safe, but to show you what happens. I'm sorry, but you've come all the way here for nothing. Goodbye. Whoops. That didn't go too well. Here's an overview of how you're doing. Click next to get more detailed feedback. Right, so as you can see, when you make that mistake, she pops up and gives you some real life feedback. Whoops, that didn't go too Oops, well. I meant to hit next. Just made. You can see what happened and what you chose by clicking the replay buttons. So here, I'm just going to show you kind of quickly. This is, it'll show you what led up to the scenario, what you chose, the options that you rejected, and it'll give you feedback. Let me, let's see what the feedback says. You chose the right body language for Sam. He looked composed, confident, and well-organized. And this is what I, a piece that I really liked the Academy is that when we interviewed um, the job seekers and the career advisors, and the employers, we, we interviewed about 50 of them, and they gave a lot of tips and tricks for your learners uh, that we built into the academy. So uh, this is what we call the reference zone. So I want to show you what they say about body language. Yeah. I'm just going to click through this quickly. There's some text about it, but here comes the videos. The time where I interviewed an individual who I know would have been a great candidate for our company, uh, based on his application and his resume. And the second he walked in for the interview, he sat down, he didn't shake my hand, he slouched in a chair, his arms was folded. He just seemed like he didn't want to be there. And for me, that, that spoke a lot. His body language told me a lot about his personality, even though his work experience and um, his application showed that he would have been a good candidate, uh, his body language told me something different. So we ended up not hiring the gentleman. Before we even open our mouths, people um, around us can see what we're thinking. That's what I wanted to show you about the reference zone because that's a really nice thing. You can go back here. Let's check out what we did on the uh, question that we got wrong. All right, so this is what happened as we that led up to the the question that we picked the wrong answer. This is the one we picked, and the, here's the rejected ones. And then she gives the feedback. Michael was talking about two different animals. Was rude about it too. It's always better to admit you don't know something instead of making assumptions. Another, and as you can see there, there's the reference zone about assumptions as well. All right, so I just wanted to show you that performance simulation. I won't go all the way through it in the interest of time, but I wanted to uh, to get that or give you that overview. Um, that's the great thing about online learning. Like I said earlier, you can make a mistake and get a do-over. And in real life, you don't always get that opportunity to do things over. And you can here you can make make those mistakes in a safe environment and learn from them. 
Uh, so that was a performance simulation, very scenario based and a lot of different paths you can take uh, based on your response. At the end of that module, there are there is a three question survey and all the performance simulations have those three question surveys um, to help the to find out if the it helped the learner increase their skills, um, if it increased their confidence and what they thought of the overall quality of the course. So if you're introducing the academy to your learners, be sure to tell them to go all the way through the end of the survey to be marked complete. Um, now I'll show you what we call a computer-based training module. It's a little bit different and sequential in nature. They don't have that branched approach like you just saw. And what I'll show you is the Identify Your Skills, which is a pretty popular module with many of our partners. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that started. And I meant to queue it up to slide seven, but all right. I don't, it started over. So it was supposed to kind of. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna skip through it quickly. It's supposed to be queued up midway through. You need to take. You need to decide what. There are generally three steps to finding a job. The steps are to identify a career path for yourself, apply for a job in that career path, and know what to do when you get a job offer. Click each icon to reveal the three main steps to finding a job. And it's going to make me click on. Meet with an advisor. Identify your experience and skills. I'm going to get to the, inter the, the interactive activity, so I'm just going to kind of skip through this. Just give me, bear with me one moment. Well, that's a lot of that. It's not as simple as just applying and going to an interview. Let's try an activity. On the list, click on all the ideas that are good steps you can take to find a job. All right, so I'll go through this one. And, um, you can figure out your skills, tailor your resume choose, let's see, research suitable jobs, but if you need some help, you can click on answers and it will show you all of them. All right. Play the video, then click on the images to view each character's profile before meeting them on the upcoming pages. Almost to where I wanted to get to. But as you can see, you have a lot of videos in here. You get the introduction to the people and you get some interactive activities to show you or to, to help you learn the, the content. At the end of this, at the end of this uh, computer-based training module, you're gonna have a quick quiz. So a five second quiz to ensure that you learned the content. Um, and then you can take these as many times as you want. You're almost there. Just three things Oh, I'm going to hop out of this now. There we go. And just show you a little bit more around the site. Um, yeah, I know what I did wrong. I picked your training journey and I identify your skills, but it still showed you what a computer-based training module looks like. Um, so as I showed you, you can, you can customize the learning plan by doing the pre-assessment, or you can go through all of the the uh, different court modules here and pick out exactly what you want your learners to to uh, to learn and then just tell them which ones to take either way I would make sure to give them some guidance on what um, on, on how to manage or to navigate through this um, also let's see all right, all right, on this progress page, it will show you all of the progress that you've done in, throughout all of the modules, and it will give you a, a percentage of, of all three categories here. And then they have the option to email their progress to you, um, which is the best way to, you know, ha have some accountability and show, show you that they are progressing along. I also want to show you the reference zone page here. So how I showed you that body language reference zone there, um, see it's right here. All of the reference zone tips are built into one page here. 
Um, so you can easily get back to them and find those materials. And then on the home page, um, all the activity packs are here. So at the end of those computer-based training modules, like the last one I just showed you, there's gonna be an activity pack that kind of ties into uh, the activities they just conducted with the, um, with the interface. And so you can actually view all of those activity packs in one place. So you can easily get to the tailor your resume activities, the research activities, or the creating resumes uh, templates. So you have all of those in one spot. Um, and like I said, after, after each module, there's the quiz and the survey. So make sure that everybody is taking those to make sure that they get marked as complete on that progress page or it'll not show them as complete. So I'll go ahead and flip back over here to talk about next steps and ways to deliver this. Um, like I said, the distance learning option is a big is a big opportunity right now in our current climate. Um, lear learners can sit in a virtual classroom, learn at their own pace, or while you know, and um, and kind of take the modules as they wish. And then you can tie those together, possibly with like a Zoom call to just kind of kick off the sessions. Um, and get them motivated, and then also to check in with them, you know, a weekend or something. Um, so like I said, I'm working on a syllabus for another organization now, and we're, we're building that kickoff call into the syllabus and then some regular check-in calls. Um, when life goes back to normal, you can teach this in a computer lab. Um, so you would have uh, training delivered on a classroom setting. Each student has a PC or a tablet and instructors walking around answering questions and, uh, and facilitating the conversation. The homework approach is, you know, if you assign the homework and give them some modules to do at home and then when they come back to class, you can debrief. Uh, there's a career center approach. So an advisor can sit down with a learner, discern what their specific needs are, and then recommend specific modules to fit those needs, which that can also be done virtually, um, and then conduct some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then there's the presenter approach. So this is for orgs with lower access to technology, and maybe not everybody can do these on a computer or a tablet of their own. And an instructor would then stand in front of the room, present the module, walk through it with the group, and then complete a group report at the end of the, uh, the session. So each of those have their pros and cons. Um, and I highly, I, I mean, I just assume most people are looking at this distance learning opportunity right now, but there are definitely lots of ways to, to facilitate this. Uh, this has been taught in high schools, colleges, nonprofits, and government agencies to youth, adults, senior citizens, learners with disabilities, uh, veterans, justice involved youth and adults, Head Start programs, TANF programs, refugees, ESL students, and international students. Um, the purple columns, the two right columns, they are the types of programs that ha this uh, these courses have kind of been implemented with. I would say the right hand column is more um, community college based programs and then the center column is more uh, is more what some of our nonprofits have used. So just take a look and see if any of those kind of programming courses have give you any inspiration on uh, how you could implement this into your program with your students. So next step, so if you're excited about the Academy or think this is a, a great platform to implement since it's so media rich and easy to understand and easy to access, you know, what we're looking for in partners is to have you help us reach our goal of 150,000 or more new learners in the next three years. Um, we're, we're hoping that organizations could commit to 1,000 or more learners per organization per year, but that is not like a hard and fast rule, you know, a hard set rule there. Um, we do consider smaller, highly motivated organizations, um, and we have organizations of all sizes working with us. Um, we ask that you demonstrate expertise and commitment to successfully roll out new initiatives in your organization. Um, and then we ask that you help us promote the Skills to Su Succeed Academy. So those um, testimonials and success stories that I showed you on slide 12 are from this 
piece right here, we do ask that we get one learner and one staff success story per year. And that goes on to a reference site for similar organizations and may be featured in a deck like this. Um, so in the engagement phase, uh, so we would send you some demo IDs and uh, give you the opportunity to explore the academy with some recommended modules for you to look through on your own. Um, we give you an onboarding questionnaire and a license agreement to sign where uh, we ask that you, you know, that you commit to X amount of learners over a three year period. Um, and then there's the option of, and then we also do, we, we help in the enablement phase with train the trainers, um, establishing local academy champions, and then support. We do set up reporting and periodic, periodic progress meetings and annual results with you. Um, those are for the learners that do, the, I mean, for the organizations that do that license agreement. But if you can't commit to, you know, a large number, uh, to, you know, if you don't want to commit to the three years or the large number of learners, you also have the opportunity of becoming an open access partner. And we would just give you a code and you would provide that to your partners. We'd give you like a recorded train the trainer and, um, and there wouldn't be any reporting on the back end because you would just have that open access code and nothing tied to your specific organization. So that's really everything from me. And um, we have about 10 minutes left for further discussion. But uh, real quick, I just want to give this uh, this announcement from the Max. Their next Max Minutes is tomorrow. And ironically, you're getting a presentation now by Accenture. And then tomorrow, Chris Young with Accenture, who is one of our South Market leads um, and serves as a senior manager in our public sector consulting division. We'll be discussing our recent work related to COVID-19. So not one of those um, hundreds of emails you're getting that says our response to COVID-19. This shows the really cool initiatives and work that Accenture is doing around COVID-19 and the federal stimulus packages and the budget realities for state and local governments. So it'll be a very intriguing conversation um, and just wanted to put that out there for you guys. And then, like I said, uh, after at the end of this deck that you're going to receive from me, there's additional success stories that you can look at as well. So, anybody have any questions, or feel free to come off mute, or we and uh, and just speak up. And Shanika, I don't know if you saw any chatted um, questions at all, but if there's anything in chat, feel free to bring those up now too. Yes, Thomas, uh, I have one question. This is Roderick Wyatt. Um, the assessment process, uh, is it, uh, is there several phases of the assessment, like career development assessment, and then also the assessment of how to, um, navigate through the modules? Yes, the, the assessment that we have, the pre-assessment just kind of gives, gets an idea, it's a two, the two question assessment that gets an idea of where you are in your journey. Um, so maybe you want a different job or change career paths, and then it'll have a second question to follow up to that. So each of those, each of these uh, categories here has a two, it has a follow up question to kind of narrow down. That's the pre assessment. Is that what you were talking about, or were you talking about further assessment? Yeah, I guess it would be the pre assessment. If someone just uh, out of high school and not sure which career they want to go into. Um, yeah, so like I'm beginning my career search would be a great one to put there, or I'm starting my first job. You can select both of those. And then from there, it'll let you tailor. So I want to learn more about careers. I want to find the career that's right for me. I want to prepare for a new job or succeeding in a new job. So let's say you want to learn more about careers and find the right one for me. It's going to give you 10 modules that are related to those topics there. Okay. And it'll help them identify where their strengths or weaknesses in those particular or skill sets needed. Yeah, that's the really that's that's a big piece of the you and your career and find in that whole beginning. Um, the the very first of the three categories of courses is finding your strengths and what your skills are and what your and you know aligning your interest with career types. So it'll definitely give you some um, some good feedback on what your interests are and what's available to you out there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, thanks, good question. Hi, Thomas, how are you? I'm wonderful, how are you? 
I'm well. My name is Kimberly Monroe. I'm with um, Bobby Dodd Institute here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I uh, saw where you indicated that the Skills to Succeed Academy is also good for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Yes. Um, I was wondering, um, does the platform allow for you to provide, you know, additional support and or modifications for the individual to go through the different modulars? Like um, if it's um, a situation where it's going to be, you know, proctored to them, you know, and monitored by um, their training specialists or something like that is is it designed to um, allow for those type of modifications or accommodations? If, if I, I know that it has like, there's like accessibility um, options for it to where you can tap through and arrow through, you know, for people with like re screen readers or, or, um, or communication devices. I used to work with a guy that had cerebral palsy and, you know, he would use different platforms and have to have those, uh, those features available to him. Um, also, you know, if you have somebody that's working with you as a, as an aid of some sort, you know, that's going to be easily, uh, you know, worked through them to the beneficiary themselves. Yes. Okay, and now, you know, now that, you know, a lot of us, we're um, providing, you know, a lot of services virtually on virtual platform. On the user's end, the individuals, this is, you know, of course, web-based. So as far as equipment for the user, they would only need um, access to uh, internet, computer, yeah, it works best on a computer or tablet. I think mobile screens are a little small for the, for you saw how it was that box in the middle of the screen. I mean, it can be used, but it's not really, um, it wasn't really designed for something that small or it's not optimized for something that's for like a smaller device, but a tablet is perfect. Uh, a laptop or a computer is perfect. And that's all they need, just that and the internet access and they should be good to go. Okay, um, so one last question. Um, would a, a trainer, like would I, as a trainer, you know, with someone, be able to go in and identify the modulars that I would want them to take and maybe um, send them that information where they're only taking what I have prescribed for them? Yes, so that's that's exactly what I'm doing for communities and schools right now. We're working on creating a pilot and customizing which courses we're taking, um, and I'm helping them along that path. But yeah, you can easily like just give them a learning plan. Um, like you know, you would have this quick start guide here that you could send out, and you could mark off which ones that you wanted them to to take, and you would okay. give them their access code here. And and you know, the site has. Uh, the site has a lot of resources built into it right here at the front, like getting started guides, a staff quick start guide, and a learner quick start guide. The learner one is one I just showed you. And then okay. we also have train the trainer materials that will give you good descriptions of each course. So that way you can kind of like pick and choose which ones you want from there as well. Or you can use that assessment that I was showing you to kind of help you narrow down those courses. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good questions. Anybody else just have a question or any kind of feedback on what you think about the course or if you think it might be a good fit with your organization? Hi, Thomas. This is Serena Newhall. I'm the Director of Career Pathway Advising at KSU's College of Professional Education. I saw your billboard the other day for KSU that said, keep safe and united, I think. I thought that was really creative. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. Well, this is fantastic. I, I'm so excited listening to this. You know, we're actually in the process of, well, it's a yet to be named, but um, kind of Career Builders Academy, where we really are going to be looking at um, building stronger partnerships, especially with um, high schools in Cobb, Cherokee, and Bartow. And so I just think that this is going to be such an asset to what we um, have already been thinking. 
opposed to really having to reinvent the wheel, which is what we would have been doing. And so I'm just really grateful to get this information um, from you and I will definitely be following up. Um, I just wanted to say hi to Joy because I know she's, <laughs> because I know she's listening to you and um, Chris Young is actually a good friend of mine. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from him tomorrow as well. So anyway, I just wanted to say that I'm grateful and I hope we get to connect soon. Yeah, for sure. So like I said, I will go ahead and send out this deck immediately after this call. You'll have my information. If you follow up with me, I can get you some demo IDs and get you started looking around the academy and learning those, course. you know, like figuring out which courses you want. I would say that you don't have to sit there and go through all the courses. I would just pick some good topics and just get rolling with it. Use the inspiration from this call to just roll it out to your learners, but we're here to help you through that and uh, feel free to reply to me at any point and, um, and, I, and I'll be there for you to help get this started. Um, I know it's right at the top of the hour, um, so Dana, you can go ahead and probably stop, or, or Joy, you can go ahead and stop the recording, but I don't mind hanging out here a little bit longer if people still have questions or want to keep talking. I don't have a hard stop right now. Well, um, thank you, Thomas. On behalf of the Max Provider Council and, and, and Max, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, Shanique, thank you for being on, on for support. Um, thank you also for uh, having um, the testimonial uh, from Prescolas. I think that was helpful, uh, especially for, for um, some of the organizations that I work with an older population. I think hearing that, that the modules can still work, even though it's tailored to a younger audience, was really helpful to hear um, a, a live um, a live testimony also. Thank you for inviting her on today. Um, if there are not any other questions, we'll go ahead and end on time. Um, as, as